Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and today we are talking about specifically the cinema camera actor. That might be because you want to make your footage look more cinematic or engaging and the default camera just doesn't cut it. You have a beautiful environment, you have everything set up, but it just does not look right and you are at a loss when it comes to the cinema cam actor. How do we do this? And what can we do? This is not a random tutorial. This is purely a cinema camera actor tutorial. So you should see some timestamps on the screen. After that, there's a plug for like and subscribe, obviously all my services and business inquiries are in the description below. Here's my website, Patreon, Patreon, yada, yada. Thank you very much for supporting me. And uh, we will go into the video. I want to choose this hero object here, this mug from another tutorial that we did on how to generally achieve a better rendering. And we want to make it our hero object, but no matter how we frame it, and maybe we even play around with the field of view setting, it just does not look right. We even already have the post-processing volume enabled. If I disable it, we can see there's even no bloom and everything. It just doesn't look the way we want to. Let's just assume we are otherwise very happy with how this looks, right? I think I like the lighting and everything. It's just maybe there's something with the camera. And most of the time there is. Let's reset that to 90 degrees and we place a cinema cam actor. Cinema camera actor into the scene right about here. We can already see what the cinema camera actor sees, but this is a little bit clunky, isn't it? So we switch perspective into cinema cam actor and then we can pilot it as, as we would. We can already see that this looks a lot better. I'm roughly bringing this into focus. I'm bringing this into focus. There is a floating mouse, but we can address that maybe later on if we wanted to. And now, Oh, let's click on it. Cinema camera actor. This is what we have. The first thing we're going to do is define our shot, our composition. So in my, I always like telezooms, which means 35 to 50 is like more of the portrait, but I go over 50. Usually I like like the 85 range uh, in real world cameras as well. But for this one, I'm going with 70. I think this is plenty enough. By the way, this is all on the focus settings. I'm getting a manual focus to this mug. In order to check if it's really in focus, I can draw a debug focus plane and then just set it like this. You can see some light flickering over here. This is of the, because of the light source. This flickering is really annoying me. So I'm gonna just go and hide it. You can see I already have a creamy background. Maybe this is exactly what you want. Maybe you wanna see it without all of these strange details. Press G on your keyboard. And this is the shot you are getting. G activates, deactivates. This goes for all the lighting settings as well, right? If you press G, we're good. And everything is away. Perspective, cinema cam actor. Let's go. Now that the flickering is gone, maybe we can get a nicer shot in here. Yes. What, how do you actually use this in more in depth? You can switch between APS-C, which will have a 1.3 crop and 35 millimeter full, full frame, full aperture. So you can see there is a lot of options that you have. Usually, I think in the most cases, it's fine to set it, but to leave it at 16 by nine and we're good, good to go. There is a correlation between black background blurriness and focal length and aperture. And this is a question that I've encountered in forums a lot of times where people were like, oh, I cannot get this into focus or like have a blurry, blurry foreground and blurry background. But my hero object, maybe let's see it with the, with a table or something with, with this one, how to achieve the look that the background is blurry and the foreground is blurry as well. So this has a lot to do with real world photography and how cameras work in the real world. Let's quickly go over it because what you actually need is basically those two parameters, aperture, focal length, and distance to the object. Let me quickly explain. Okay, so our goal is to have a blurry background. That is our written goal that we wanna, that we wanna achieve. We have three variables. We have the f-stop, we have the focal length, which is going to be just millimeters, and then we have the distance. On cameras, on, on lenses for cameras, you oftentimes see maybe 85 millimeters 2. F 
there are some rule of thumbs that you want to keep in mind. Typically, the lower this number, maybe 1.4 to 5.6, the lower this number, the bigger, the, blur, the blurrier the background is. So 1.4 will give you a much blurrier background than 5.6. That has something to do with how much light is coming into the sensor and everything. But right now we're not discussing lenses. Just keep in mind, this is a gross simplification of what is going on but I just want you to get what's going on. So this is going to make it much more blurrier than 5.6, than 5 right? And uh, this is generally referred to as aperture or F stop. Then we have the focal length, the millimeters, which is again, grossly simpl simplification, the zoom factor. 85 millimeters is already tele, is a telephoto, is already zooming in. All right, between 35 and 50 millimeters is like, human perception. So um, now we can bring this variable into it. Let's keep that in mind. Let's say we have our subject, which is this one. We have our back, we have our background, which is just going to be this one. And we have our camera, which is going to be this one. The lower the aperture, right? The smaller your focus plane is going to be. And if you focus on this one, then everything up here is going to be blurry. Everything about here is going to be blurry. It is going to be blurrier the further we are away from our focus line. The intensity of this blur factor is determined by this 1.4 aperture, for instance, which is very, very blurry, which means if you want to have a blur, even blurrier background, then this background needs to be much further away because why? Because the further you are away from your focus point, the blurrier it's going to be. So if you can distance your subject from the background, it is going to be way more blurrier. You can amplify, amplify this effect by playing with your focal length. If you zoom in and bring the background, background further away, this is going to be so much blurrier. Also conversely, Conversely, if you bring the subject closer to the camera. So if we bring this aperture in here to a one, you see it's crazy blurry. If we bring it to a 5.6, as we had on the, this, on the, in the example, it's not going to be less blurry. If you bring it to a 22, there is significantly less blurry. However, right, if you want to have it as a, as a five, which is moderately, moderately blurry, but not too blurry, but we go further away, Oh, well, now we're outside. We go further away, let's bring it back to it, and zoom in. You can see the background is going to be so much more blurry, even though we are at an aperture of five. This is mainly a looks thing. What kind of, how much zoomed in you want to have it. Again, I usually prefer something between 70, 85. Great and amazing for me. So this is how you use all of these settings on your focal length and aperture and the distance to your objects to the background in order to make cool and distinct shots. This is not the only thing that you can do in here, right? You can play. You have a lot of settings that you can play around with. A lot of them are some post processing effects that you can do per camera basis. You can drag and drop in a post processing node post-processing node or post-processing volume from here to affect the whole scene or on a camera to camera basis, post-processing in here. However, there are some settings in here that genuinely affect how your lens looks and what a lens would have in real life. For instance, exposure. Right now, the more light I put into the scene, the camera is trying to expose correctly for what is going on. I have to really try to under or overexpose all of this. It is doing a great job. If you want to leave it at manual and want to say, okay, I want to have as much control as possible over my lighting, which you want to maybe want to as a director or lighting expert or DOP, you can also underexpose or overexpose manually if, if you want to. Maybe you want to have more control in post-production or you want to focus on different settings. Same thing is here with your camera settings. You can adjust the shutter speed to maybe your one over uh, your 180 degree rule or anything else. 
or your ISO settings to make it look more like a real world camera. But there are a lot of settings that you can do. You can also, as I mentioned, get a post-processing volume in there and set some settings in here as well. For instance, I have a bloom. I have a slight bloom effect. And also I can actually go deeply into color grading if I wanted to set the temperature maybe a little, maybe a little bit warmer. Contrast my highlights maybe, make it a little bit less more noticeable and change the general looks of my scene. That is all you can do in these post-process volume as well as in a cinema cam actor in here as well. You have a denoiser, you have film grain that you wanna, if you wanna add that. I don't know if the compression of YouTube allows that this is going to be noticeable. I'm gonna turn it to 10 so you can see what's going on. But usually you wanna have it like, I don't know, something less noticeable. Thank you very much for your attention. This is it. This is a few tips that I can bring to you in order to make you understand the cinema cam actor a little bit better. I hope this was all right. I hope there's something you could take away from it. And also here's a, I hope that you like and subscribe. <laughs> there is a plug again for like and subscribe. Here are some websites and stuff from me. Support me on Patreon if you want to. If not, it's totally fine. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.